with Christy Reeves. I am so excited you're joining us today, bringing you the rebels of the world and empowering you to be your own rebel. What my intention is for you for this show is to really leave you feeling inspired. You know, I've been, when we were doing the whole pre-launch and branding for the show and wanted to, we're talking about what we wanted to bring to you, we were really wanting to Bring content that inspires and empowers. And you see so many things are going on in the world right now where so many people are going, what is going on? There's so much negativity and wars and crime. And But at the same time, we are feeling a change. There is really a change going on in the world. And it's the change makers who are stepping up. And you see all these amazing kids who are in their teens who are creating new technology and bringing new developments to the world. And there really is a wave of people that are coming in or have been around that are creating change in the world. So my intention for you is to be inspired and be empowered. And for years, I've been saying, you know, if we can all do a little thing every single day to inspire or just do a, a random act of kindness every single day, we can really actually change the world. So let's start rebelling over here. And I have two wonderful rebel hearts for the show today. And I'm going to give you a little bit of information about them. Susie Hardy is the co-host of the Food Heals podcast and passionate about healing the body with nutrition and holistic medicine rather than drugs. Woohoo! She <laughs> learned firsthand at the age of 16 that Western doctors didn't always know the answers. After graduating from UC Berkeley with a degree in psychology, she decided to follow her dreams of becoming a professional actress. Along the way, she also became a licensed massage therapist, and she had a thriving healing practice while she studied acting and writing. Zuzi found her way into podcasting because she has also been doing voiceover work since she was a child. She has voiced over 60 audiobooks in the past two years. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and her voice can be heard on the radio, in film and cartoons, and of course, the Food Heals podcast. As an actor, she has performed on both stage and screen, from the classics to improv, and she just completed her first feature-length screenplay. Congratulations, Susie. Thank you. <laughs> Susie lives with her husband, Michael, and dog, Obi, in Hollywood. And then we have the incredible Allison Melody, the host of the Food Needles podcast and owner of Melody Productions, is an eco-entrepreneur with a passion for film, fitness, and food. Through a podcast, she brings together experts in nutrition and healing to teach listeners the best kept natural secrets to health and happiness. For the past 11 years, Allison has also directed, produced, and edited documentary films, PSAs, commercials, and viral videos for clients on the topics of social justice, human rights, and holistic health. Allison is currently in the process of directing Food Heals, a documentary starring MBA champion, actor, philanthropist, and vegan champion John Sally, director of Star uh, director and star of Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, Joe Cross, and author of I Forgot to Die, Khalil Rafadi, just to name a few. Together, they host a Food Heals podcast, which has been hailed as Sex in the City for Food. <laughs> I am so excited to have the two of you on the show today. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you, for us. <laughs> you make us sound so good. You are. <laughs> it's incredible because, you know, you've been such a pioneer when it, and especially Alice, I've known you. I remember since 2010, I remember meeting you when one of your short films, your documentary short films, aired at a film festival. That's right. That is how we met. I forgot about that. Yeah. That was so fun. And you had such a great story to share. And I just wanted to, at that time, I hadn't started the podcast yet, but I was using film as the medium I knew how to share these stories. And that mm -hmm. was great. And I really wanted to share your story. I remember I blogged about you on my old blog and everything yes. like that. And then now, years later, I finally found my place with the podcast and Susie and we just mm -hmm. love sharing people's stories just like yours. Mm -hmm. And you both had such a different journey of how you got to where you are right now and what inspired both of you. So Susie, do you want to share some of your story or how it all started and what inspires you? Of course, of course. So um, growing up, I was very fortunate because I was very healthy and I grew up in a family where nutrition and health, both mental and physical, was talked about and prioritized. So I knew I was taking uh, fresh green juice since I was a child. My mom had a juicer. 
Wow, that's um, incredible. I know. Yeah. I know. That's I know. really incredible. It's like yeah. unheard of. Yeah. Uh, I know. And But uh, to me, this was normal. Mm-hmm. And I was given ground up supplements and vitamin C, liquid vitamin C and knew about vitamins and supplements way before the Flintstones even had those horrible little gummies for kids. <laughs> I, my mom would grind up minerals and put them in you know, applesauce and mm-hmm. feed them to me before I could swallow a, a pill. So that's that amazing. was like my normal. Mm-hmm. And when I would see my other friends with all these sugary cereals and they all they ate was pizza and french fries, you know, that was not allowed in my house. We had vegetables. My mom would cook whole, you know, whole foods for us and that's what we ate. And how was it for you being around all these kids who are living on, you know, the sugar and all these different junk foods you know, and you being the healthy girl in school? Yeah, <laughs> sometimes I was jealous. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't super strict. I mean, I was allowed to have it, it what nothing was no, one thing was forbidden. We were never allowed to have sugary cereals like those you know, Lucky <laughs> yeah. Charms and Applejack. Mm-hmm. That was once a year at Halloween. That was it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't. My mom wasn't so strict. She knew that when you make something a forbidden fruit, kids want it more. Yeah. Yes. So she just pushed the healthier choices. This is how we eat as a family. And this is why. And she would educate us. And it actually happened from when she was a child. Her father worked in Solgar Vitamins in New York City as a security guard. And he was given free supplements from Solgar, which has been around forever. And so she would educate us. That was that was the importance mm, of it. And incredible. I knew that. And, and I, I that was we just accepted it as a family. And, you know, what's amazing is that my brother was never sick as a child until he was about five years old. I'm not even kidding. He he wow. loved vitamin C, the chewables. He was always healthy. That's amazing. so I grew up with this this family that that kind of educated us about that. When I was 16, I had a back injury from cheerleading, and it was just a soft tissue pull. Um, But over time, it became a problem, and I developed sciatica, and I was walking around like an old woman. I went to doctors who pushed pain meds. I went to a chiropractor who cracked my bones, but it was a a muscle pull, but really, Mm -hmm. really deep in my back. Mm -hmm. Nothing helped, and I was a mess. I finally went to an acupuncturist who had massage therapy, and together, in three weeks, those two things healed my back, and I was floored that is incredible wow yeah because everybody else no no one else up to up until that point could help me I was in real pain and I was still very young so that kind of opened my eyes and later down the road I decided to become uh, as my side job to work for myself a healer and I studied uh, in Culver City energy work and body work and Mm -hmm. I just always found it so interesting because so many people think I just have to live with back pain or muscle pain or neck pain or there's no other option. I have to have surgery. Mm-hmm. And I've met so many people and I've worked on so many people where I show them a different way. Yes. It takes longer. Yeah. It takes uh, getting in touch with your own body. It takes changing what you're doing. But you can fix yourself. And that, to me, was so empowering. That mm-hmm. kind of just opened my eyes. And I forever um, will abide by that. And Allison and I, when we met, that was like the one the one kernel of truth. Mm-hmm. That we're like, yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, and I love that story, and I love what you're saying because so many people go with, I call it the Band-Aid technique, Mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, this is what's going on. Let's give you painkillers, and that way you don't feel the pain, but we're not healing the root issue of what's going on. May it be functional in the anatomy of the body or may it be something as simple as changing your nutrition, changing your diet. And it's, you know, I I, I have compassion for people because I understand wanting to feel better, and you go to those uh, doctors or practitioners that you think should have the answers and when they leave you with nothing and just here's a prescription where you know mm-hmm. that's a, just a band-aid yeah. Um, yeah. you have to do the work yourself you have to do research and trying different things out for yourself and talking to people and you have to be your own doctor like the doctors these days in most cases aren't saying what are you eating every day what is your mm-hmm. lifestyle like mm-hmm. what are the things that you're doing that are that you could change, that you have control of. And so that's the biggest problem. They're just like, everyone wants a pill, and the doctors aren't saying, well, there could be another option, either because they don't know or because they don't believe the patient will do it. Yeah. Thank you. And that actually brings us right to your story, right? (laughs) Kind of (laughs) does. Yes. So tell us your story, Allison. (laughs) Well, you know, I didn't used to believe all of this. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to be completely clueless and have no idea and have no awareness about the importance of health and the importance of wellness and the importance of taking care of yourself. And that was because, you know, I didn't grow up like Susie did. Like, I'm so jealous. That is how how Susie grew up is how my kids will grow up. Like, I don't have them yet, but when I do, they're going to be juicing and there's going to be no sugar and I'm going to be 
terribly strict mother and they will probably <laughs> rebel just like you said <laughs> they will <laughs> they will Absolutely. so I will have to find a healthy balance but I grew up in a typical American household we ate typical American diet grilling burgers with cheese and you know there wasn't a lot of talk about health um, it wasn't really present no one really cared it was just like okay do your thing my parents took a lot of pharmaceutical drugs um, like most people once they hit 50 it's like lower your blood pressure you know you're taking all this medication and my mom had multiple sclerosis my whole life I don't remember a time when she didn't and so that's a quite debilitating disease that gets progressively worse over time and so the doctors never had an answer for her so cut to I'm in college and um, my parents actually moved to the beach 30 minutes away so I still had a lot of contact with them and she had gotten to the point where she could barely walk she could barely feel her hands and feet and all she did all day was take pills so she would take a pill at 12 o'clock and then take two more pills at one o'clock to make mm. sure that you know whatever side effect the first pill caused and so there yeah. were all these counter reactions and blah 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 and she was growing hair and weird parts of her faces and like wow. she did not look like a normal human being anymore and you know I didn't realize at the time that those pills were destroying her body the body was being prohibited from doing what it naturally does, which is repair and heal itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm still young, you know, I have no idea. And so then she got diagnosed with cancer. And looking back, I can now with full confidence say, well, those pills did something so toxic to her body that probably is how the cancer was allowed to develop. Plus the mm -hmm. food she was eating, we were drinking milkshakes, eating fast food, you know, yeah. I we were eating a lot of dairy and all these things that, you know, kind of sugar that promote cancer growth. And we didn't know that there was an anti-cancer diet. We had no idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we did the typical, what the doctor said, you know, um, chemotherapy, surgery, um, radiation and she just got progressively worse lost her hair and it wasn't a way to live it was uh, you know it, it just the, it wasn't a way that a typical human being is supposed to live we are not supposed to live sick and near death yes. and those pills and the chemo and radiation only made her progressively worse she mm -hmm. looked a lot better before she started all that shit but I still had no idea, and the doctors weren't talking about nutrition. And I remember saying to the doctor, like, does it matter what she eats? He's like, no, eat whatever she wants. She can smoke if she wants to. Uh-huh. My mom had had quit wow. smoking as an adult, like basically when she had me quit smoking, hadn't smoked for years, and started smoking again because she had cancer and was like, well, fuck it. I'm dying. At least I'll get a little bit of release. I'm oh sorry. Am I allowed to cuss? Yeah. We <laughs> 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 have spoken over here. I'm so sorry, everyone. Okay. So then, so unfortunately, she passed away a month before I graduated college. Mm. And so we still had no awareness, my dad and I, but I started, you know, just realizing there must be another way. There has mm -hmm. to be something else. So I moved to California, and that's when I started meeting people like you, Christy, and people like Avita, who was in the film that you were talking mm -hmm. about in the film festival, who had healed themselves and reversed themselves from debilitating diseases and chronic diseases and mm -hmm. stage four cancer, okay, yeah. which was unheard of to me. I was like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And they were doing juice cleanses, and they were giving the body the tools that it needed to heal itself. Mm -hmm. So I went home on a mission, Dad, get off your drugs change your diet, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I'm good. He just wanted to smoke and drink. Then I got the call. My dad has cancer. I was like, of course. I mean, not to be crude, but I was like, of course you do. You were even un more unhealthy than my mother was. And so I went home. I put him on a juice cleanse. I gave him a lot of garlic, and he was just like, no. <laughs> I can't I can't and so I had to accept the fact that he didn't believe it he wasn't going to change he thought alternative medicine was woohoo BS you know it just wasn't for him mm -hmm. and so unfortunately he passed away about three months later and now it's my mission that first of all I will never get cancer because I do everything anti-cancer that I can mm -hmm. and secondly that no one has to suffer from this anymore we know there are case after case and story after story of people healing and reversing cancer by doing yeah. the work it's a lot of work it's not like popping a pill it mm -hmm. is changing your whole lifestyle changing your whole diet eating greens eating nutrition eliminating the foods that cancer feeds on like sugar and so mm -hmm. and and I'm not saying everyone has to give up sugar tomorrow but if you're sick there is so much you can do to allow the body to repair itself you also got to do the emotional work look yes I was just thank you okay. thank yeah. well, you for well, saying that well, yeah it's mm -hmm. part and parcel with if you're going to change your diet drastically or give up something you are addicted to all of most people are addicted mm -hmm. to sugar yeah um 
it, it brings up a lot of emotional stuff. Absolutely. And that is its own separate component of healing. Yeah. yeah. And what I also know, yep. heavy metals, we all, in psychosomatics, we yep. say heavy metals store emotions. So sometimes people start on a cleanse or they start a new workout regime and they feel really amazing the first two weeks and then the body starts going into detox and it brings up the heavy metals that carry the emotions. So all our memories, all our emotions that have been stored in, on these toxins that are coming to the surface. Yes. And that is usually when people want to throw the towel. So I love what you're saying. It has to be a connection or a combination of body, mind, and spirit. It cannot be just the body or it cannot be just the mind. It has to be every single aspect of it. You can think it. that, but you're going to learn it will bring. Mm-hmm. I mean, just with my back injury, mm-hmm. I remember going to an acupuncturist in college and I started to cry when mm-hmm. he was working on my low back. And he's like, oh, yeah, your low back holds this kind of memory and this kind of emotion. And I was like, what? It was, um, yeah. I was like, what are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. <laughs> but he was completely, tr- it was completely mm-hmm. true. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've gotten acupun- acupuncture treatments and it doesn't hurt. It's like, ding, ding, mm-hmm. ding. And then they hit that one spot and you're like, <gasps> oh yes. and you're embarrassed, but it's like, let it out. Yeah. And they're usually very encouraging. Like, just let it out. Mm-hmm. I tapped into something and this mm-hmm. is going to help heal you in this mm-hmm. moment. And like, when I think about my father, look, he had so much trauma in his life. His brother as a child was run over by a car his father wow. killed himself when mm. he was still a kid his mo- his wife my mother was died of cancer this man stuffed it all down he didn't cry he didn't deal with it he didn't go to therapy he stuffed it all down and that turns toxic in his body and of mm. course drinking smoking eating poor food didn't help but it's multifactorial mm. you know people don't just snap their fingers oh i got cancer oh my breast turned against me oh i have a gene no, it is lifestyle, yeah. it is diet, it is emotional. It is, absolutely. And and what is so interesting, going like, circling back to the whole of doing the emotional work, I actually have an acquaintance, and it was really interesting because she used to live on junk food, on burgers, on sodas, and then she started doing the emotional work, and because she was healing her emotions and moving more and more into self-love, the first thing she did is quit junk food. Mm. Then she needed to start eating organic, and then she became a vegetarian, but mm-hmm. it was a natural process her body went through by just working on her emotions. And at some point she said to me, what's next? I'm like, the next thing you're going to be a breath there and you're just going to live off prana. <laughs> <laughs> that might be pushing a little too far for me. Nice if you really <laughs> I still like my, my superfoods. But it's it's interesting how that works or the other way around. Like when I, you know, I travel a lot, so I, I'm on the airplane and then I was in Manila last year and it's a 24 hour journey. Mm. And I usually buy my bars, I get my little snacks for the plane and I didn't bring enough food. Mm. So I was forced to eat airplane food and I don't do these foods anymore. I have like a super clean vegan diet mm-hmm. with a lot of superfoods, all organic, non-GMO, no sugars. I do stevia and salatol and a little bit of maple syrup and honey mm-hmm. sometimes. And I was so sick by the time I got to Manila because my mm-hmm. body cannot process it anymore. And when I actually went back, I got there and I'm like, okay, let's just like take some tea and a lot of water to flush it out. And I can feel the difference when I put really good food in my body. Yes. I feel emotionally better. So if cool. I eat my superfood shakes with my cool protein powder, I'm like, yeah, loving it. Absolutely. So it's that connection of body, mind, spirit, soul. Mm-hmm. I just yeah. have to give a quick shout out to JetBlue because they are changing things right now. On Ooh. JetBlue, I just got back from New York and both ways I was or- able to pre-order a vegan meal. So I did not have to feel like garbage Wait, you had when a I meal? arrived. Yes. <laughs> because we often don't even get meals anymore. So it's nice that you actually got food. JetBlue, baby. I just have to give them a you shout out. You can literally call them. And there's a way to do it online, too. I haven't yeah. figured mm-hmm. out yet. But the, yeah. the lady was telling yeah. me yesterday. And I just have to give them a shout out. Because that's always my problem, mm-hmm. uh, Christy, is when I arrive somewhere, I'm like, OK, I need to find like the nearest health food store. And yes. sometimes it's hard. Like You're in the middle of, who knows, like Kansas or something. And you're like, I don't know where to get good food. I traveled from one side of South Dakota to the other. There was not one vegan thing on any menu they're like vegan i don't know what that is you know what i mean <laughs> sorry i'm not yes, knocking south dakota yeah, i think yeah. it's a beautiful that wasn't place. even close they to the accent talk- i was doing north carolina <laughs> i apologize everyone that was definitely north carolina but like yeah <laughs> but they don't know what that is and so you really have to be so conscious when you're traveling mm-hmm. and bring as much as you can mm-hmm. and i can't bring my green juice on the airplane unfortunately but it'd be so nice yeah i know yeah. but you can bring the bars and things like that but it's just it's it's hard to stay healthy when traveling. So I just say JetBlue, hail. <laughs> Much love. 
Yes, and you both have been doing the wonderful Food Heals podcast for the past. It's it been it's been more than a year, right? It's been almost two, two years. years. Oh, two years. Almost so almost two years. two years. Wow. And you're at episode one hundred and nearly one hundred and fifty. Yeah, almost one hundred. That's incredible. And, and what? See, I want to want the people who listen to this to feel empowered and inspired. And there's so many people out there who don't know what their calling is, uh, who feel like, okay, I do have a calling, or there's something within me that I really want to express in this world. Something I want to birth something I want to do to inspire or empower something that makes me happy. What inspires you doing your podcast or the massage therapy or your film work? And what what are some of the challenges that you even found creating it? And how did you overcome the challenge, including sometimes fear steps up, right, as we're like going for our biggest dreams? Yeah. Um, one thing that I, I feel like I've read this in a multitude of places, and, I, and when things pop up in my awareness a few times, I try to listen, because I feel like those are messages from beyond. And one thing that I have read <laughs> is that you have to listen to the small whispers, mm -hmm. because so many of us, when we grow up, when we come, become young, young adults and beyond, we have a lot of doubt. So we have all the reasons why we shouldn't pursue our dreams or write that book or go back to school or or see what this is like whatever that you know whatever passion or whatever 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 your heart is yearning for because your heart does not scream your mind screams about yeah. why you shouldn't go that way yes. because yeah. you might fail you might look stupid it won't work out this didn't work out before yada 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 I know everybody listening to me right now listening to this right now knows what I'm talking about <laughs> yes so you have to listen to the small whispers mm -hmm. that your heart is telling you that you might be interested in. And that might not be where you wind up. Sometimes I feel like um, we're led down paths that they're not linear. They, they take you over here. It's like shoots and ladders. You remember that game as a child? Mm -hmm. She, you, you played in Germany. So. Okay, you didn't have it in Germany. So, <laughs> shoots and ladders is a game. You roll dice, your piece goes, you go. If you land on a ladder, you go up. If you land on a chute, you go down. Oh, okay. So the goal is to get all the way up, but you sometimes have to go up and then down multiple times yes. to get to the finish line. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to play that game again. Now. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm thinking about it right now. Yeah. Well, I feel like I am in life. Like I go up and then I go down a chute and I go. And that's, I, f I find that that's just the way it is. And if you kind of accept that and know that sometimes, you know, having the faith that you're going to wind up where you need to be, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot easier to, to follow your heart. It's a great mm -hmm. analogy, actually, with yeah. the shoots and ladders, because that life's a process of integration, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. putting mm -hmm. everything together. As and you sometimes go you have to learn from that shoot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something that you need in order to step forward. Mm -hmm. And you might not know that consciously mm -hmm. until after the fact. It's a cosmic treasure hunt. Yes. <laughs> oh, I like that. I love that analogy. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for that, Susie. Of course. And what inspires and empowers you, Allison? Um, you know, I just got back from this literally last night. I'm so jet lagged. But um, you're such a trooper. You came in at two o'clock in the morning, I right? Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, "Can you come?" And I was like, "Absolutely, I will be there." She is. She is a tour de force. Yeah. I will be sleeping after this for a long time. But um, I just got back from Mastermind with Gabrielle Bernstein. If you don't know who she yes. is, she's a spiritual teacher, author, mm -hmm. and she's amazing. She's awesome. And, yeah. And so I've been um, doing masterminding with her, and you know, she says this. Be unapologetic about who you are and what you want. What that means Love to it. me is stop saying, oh, I can't do it because, and fill in the blanks, because that's what we do. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. People will judge me. A lot, a lot, a lot of, you know, who am I to do this? Cut that shit out right now. We're done with this. We're too mm -hmm. old for this. I don't care how old you are. You're 12. You're too old for this. We are done with all of that shit, okay? Mm -hmm. It is time to step into our power and be who we are. And I'm saying that confidently because that is what I'm in the process of doing and have been doing for the past, I don't know, like five years or so. Because after my dad died, I felt very, um, you know, I went through a lot of depression. I went through a lot of like, why am I here on this planet? You know, all that kind of stuff. And when I realize my purpose, and it may ebb and flow and change, and there may be purposes that come and go, when I realized that my purpose was to educate people that the body will heal, will heal itself if given the t tools that it needs to do so, and the mantra and the fact that food heals, 
I was empowered to then step forward into that. And I'm unapologetic about that. And I don't care if you agree with me or not. I That's why we started the podcast, because I was sick of talking to people who didn't want to hear what I had to say. Mm -hmm. So we start the show and then the people who want to listen, listen, and we help them. And when we get those emails that are like, thank you, I'm on this journey now. I am now um, healing myself. I am now on a cleanse. I am now trying to go vegan. I am now trying to help my mother, my sister, my grandma get off their pills, whatever it is. That is what makes me keep going hopefully Susie keep going and then as we grow and feel more empowered we're then empowered to do more things in the world and so working on a film like a documentary and all these kinds of things just to keep raising the awareness and if we stop then what is my life purpose I mean I could go and take a bunch of pills and be depressed for the rest of my life and I could have taken that path but luckily I didn't mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's what gets me up yeah. in the morning. I forget what you asked. <laughs> what inspires you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that is so true. I all I wrote a book a few years ago that mm -hmm. called the 30 Day Prosperity Program. And I remember in the opening chapter writing, I'm like, this, because the book wasn't about how to make money. It was about how to make money doing what you love doing. Yes. And I said, if every single person in this world would be doing what they wanted to do, not what they were expected to do or taught to do or told to do, yes. but really what they were doing from their heart, the yes. world would be such a happy place. Yes. And we wouldn't have to compete because each of single, single one of us has such a unique force, a unique energy that, you know, when, when we find that uniqueness, it's not like, oh, I want to have what this person has or that person have. No, it's about really bringing out what our unique, I call it our unique soul song is. Mm. And our sharing that. Song. That's gorgeous. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 Like, I think feel like everyone in this room is an entrepreneur. And so we get it. But for me, it's like, Whatever you want to do, if you want to work in a bank from nine to five, work in a bank from nine to five. But if you are secretly singing, you know, on the way there and on the way back and you want mm -hmm. to be a singer, then you need to go be a singer. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like finding what we're passionate about and then learning how to monetize that so that we can continue. Some people don't want to work. They want to be mothers. They want to be fathers. Mm -hmm. Do that. Do yes. what brings you joy every day. And that's how we flourish. And that's how we avoid the antidepressant train and the unhealthy train and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And it's so neat because this is the first show after we're out of this crazy Venus retrograde we had for the past six weeks. And John and I have yes. been talking about it. I don't know how much you've Ooh. been feeling that retrograde. But I felt Venus it was really... Mercury? Venus. Oh, Venus. And yeah. we had like Venus, Saturn, Mercury, Pluto is going... On yeah, Thursday. so Venus just went direct on the 15th. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. And you guys, I don't know what this means, so can you tell me? So what, yeah. what it means is, like, Venus retrograde brings up anything that has to do with relationships, mm -hmm. including the relationship oh, with ourselves. Oh, good. Woohoo! Yeah. Does it make sense? That okay. makes total sense. <laughs> <laughs> I only it's know like, about the tortures of Mercury in retrograde <laughs> and how he has messed, that planet has messed with my technology and my emails yeah. and my computers. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's the reason I have and paper right today and not show. my iPad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but that makes total sense, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what I was finding about this retrograde, and I kept saying it over and over to people, this retrograde is really inviting us to come from a place of self-love. Yeah. What would I do in my life if I really loved myself 100% mm -hmm. fully and completely? How would I respond if I fully embraced my own self-worth 100%? And I think this is what the Venus retrograde was inviting us to learn, which is then leads me back to what the two of you were sharing. Okay, what is it? that really fulfills me, if I feel 100% worthy, if I fully love myself, how am I gonna choose to live my life? Mm -hmm. What inspires me and what empowers me? And that is so beautiful that both of you are really doing that. So it's ending now? It's ended, it's <laughs> over, it went direct Shoot. on Saturday. <laughs> what did you learn, Allie? Oh, I gotta think about this. I can say, I can say, oh God, I love astrology. Um, uh, the more I learn about it, the more I realize I don't know about it because it is so it can get so intricate. Mm -hmm. and, yes, you're right. You know, Very the, complex. The, right, and mm -hmm. so, reading your sun sign in the back of a paper or online That's is part is of it. Barely, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. then, yeah. it depends on your moon. It depends yeah. on your rising sign, and so many other things. But like, um, but I can say for for absolute fact, I have been actually going on a journey. Um, in many of my relationships there's been like tumultuousness coming mm. up and mm. and also coming back to myself to coming back to my own mm -hmm. self-love and mm -hmm. like taking care of myself yes so the fact that you just told me <laughs> 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 that was going on <laughs> makes total sense it's always best to look Perfect. back in retrospect too yeah, because you then go. you really learn what you yeah. so you didn't analyze it when you went in there yeah, <laughs> well sometimes exactly. you can't you can't yeah. when you're no, in it when yeah. you're in it you're yeah because yeah. then you're just yeah. like oh, this, this person and my lover's being a jerk and blah 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 and then you're like oh no it's kind of happening to the world it makes a lot of sense. It does, yeah. And this was a doozy one. 
<laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we have Saturn retrograde, and we have Pluto going retrograde. So yeah. there's a so lot. So what's next? A lot. Pluto is on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Woohoo! Next one. So what but do I have to look out for? <laughs> but Pluto, <laughs> he's like, it's, you know, it's, again, so perfect. So hopefully the audience who's listening today mm-hmm. or listening to the replay mm-hmm. is going to be inspired by what you're sharing because yeah. Pluto is all about asking ourselves what is working with our jobs. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so maybe you can let us know how you're being inspired to step into your And power. Saturn's all about karma. Yeah. So good karma, bad karma, what it's, it's reaping what you sow mm-hmm. with the karma. Yeah. Okay. I've been tipping really well lately so Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) i would like to circle back and talk a little bit about more of your or the content of your work not just how you got there but the content because again food heals it's such a rebel heart podcast (laughs) because you're really talking to the rebels you're you are talking to the rebels the rebels who are creating change think about it socrates said it what how many thousands of years ago let your food be your medicine and medicine exactly Yeah. So they shouldn't be rebels. No, it's actually <laughs> no. very traditional. It's yeah. very traditional. traditional rebels. Yeah. But it's something that we've known that we've forgotten. That's yeah. sort of been, um, you know, technology is great and we have to move mm-hmm. forward as a species. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, we've forgotten or we're, we're, we're trying to move past what we know that the human body needs and that's whole mm-hmm. foods. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yes. Not processed foods, not chemicals, not drugs, uh, whole foods. Mm-hmm. And we've forgotten that because we are in a very much of a rush and mm-hmm. we have to eat so we can get back to work and yeah. get our life. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, um, it's just very funny. It's like it's yeah, we are, but we're not. We're just, <laughs> remembering, <laughs> we're just remembering. You're rebelling, bringing the old back. <laughs> yeah. Well, I. I yeah. Mm-hmm. It's. um Yeah. It's very funny to me. <laughs> yeah, it is. But it's also teaching people, like what you said, to remember what does your body need. Yeah. And I feel like there's so many nutrition plans out there. And then people go co- get confused, like, oh, what nutrition plan works for me? Instead mm-hmm. of like really tuning into your body, kind of what you're saying. Instead of listening to your loud mind, to listen to that quiet, quiet voice within that tells you, oh, you should, you know, your body wants X, Y, Z today in order yeah. to feel nurtured. That's yeah. actually a very good point that you make because we've talked to so many people about nutrition. Mm-hmm. And the overall arching theme is plants are good. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Like Mm -hmm. everybody has different opinions and you will find Mm -hmm. that no matter what. There's no one train of thought about nutrition. You will find people saying the exact opposite that have quote unquote degrees. Mm -hmm. So what you do have to do is tap into your own body because your body, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you're nutritionally deficient in something, your body will sometimes crave that. Uh, For instance, vitamin C, which we Mm -hmm. need a lot of, um, which I find sometimes like, oh, I, I need a grapefruit because maybe mm-hmm. I'm not having enough vitamin C and so forth. So you have to really tap into what your body mm-hmm. is telling you. Mm-hmm. And I feel yeah. like a lot of people don't do that. We defer to the doctor yeah. mm-hmm. or the nutrition plan, or mm-hmm. it says this on this website. Right, yes. You have to find out what, what is good for you. Mm-hmm. And so we interview the people who have done that and not there's no one size fits all, just like Susie said, there's no one story that everyone does. Basically, everyone's been on the path, realize I gotta cut some shit out, add some plants in, and I will heal. I gotta do the emotional work, whatever that looks like maybe Mm -hmm. some alternative medicine thrown in, whatever that looks like. But they're not necessarily rejecting Western medicine, but they're taking a side path, right? Yes. And when they do that, the body is allowed to heal itself. And so we also talk about the spiritual component of that, Mm -hmm. the emotional component of that. And everyone tells us a different way that they found it. Spirituality is different for every person. What fits my body is different for every person. I personally went to a functional medicine doctor, got my blood, stool, pee, hair, everything tested. She told me, here's what you, Allison, are deficient in. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean Susie's deficient in, that doesn't mean you're, Mm -hmm. you're, you know. And so we have to find- I'm perfect. Of course you are. (laughs) We have to find what works for us. And Susie, actually, tell the story about your grandfather. And the vitamin C. Oh, Oh, okay. Ooh. So my, my grandfather, um, who is no longer here, he lived till 99. Wow. He, his goal was to live to 100. He fell one year short. Aww. But he was just, uh, he has a strong soul. And he, like I said, he was my mom's dad. He worked in the, uh, he was an immigrant. And so when he came to this country, he, you know, was worked at a, as security, a uh, security guard. And he worked in Solgar Vitamins and they, different, different jobs. But he was educated because he was in that lobby. And they gave him boxes and boxes of free supplements that he brought home to my mother and to my aunt. 
And what was really interesting is he also the same building also had the Hostess Cupcake Company and Hostess okay. Pastry Company. <laughs> he also got boxes of that. <laughs> and my mom and my aunt would, um, so this was in the 50s, right? And yeah. Coca-Cola was a big thing. Yeah. And they would drink Coca-Cola because they were oh. hip, hip teenagers. And they started breaking out. And they went to my grandfather and, and said, what are we going to do? You know, they were 13. They cared about the way they looked. And he said, well, stop drinking the Coke. This is in the 50s. That yeah. was pretty, that's pretty rebel. That's pretty, yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty rebelish. That's pretty progressive. And he said, try these. I've heard these are good. And he handed them bottles of uh, minerals and vitamin C and vitamin B. Yeah. And they took them. And lo and behold, their skin cleared up. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so throughout his life, he always believed in the power of supplements. He, he ate fairly well. He, I mean, Eastern European man, like, can't say he was vegan, but he, <laughs> but he, but he always believed in supplements. Like, yeah. that, that knowledge that he had, he carried that with him, and, and he just, no matter what, like, he believed in them. And he believed vitamin C to be the cure-all for everything. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't say that he was totally true in that, but he would, he would mega-dose vitamin C mm. um, to the point where I think he leached... You, um, vitamin C is water soluble, so you can't overdose on it. Uh, the the worst thing it would do is give you the runs. You pee it out. Um, you need to make sure you're getting minerals in conjunction because it will might suck them out. Your body needs to have balance with with all of its nutrients. But he um, he would take so much vitamin C. You know he got pneumonia. He healed from it. He mm-hmm. reversed arthritis in his spine where there was a. There was an x-ray of his spine, and the doctor said, oh, you have arthritis in his spine. And like a year later, he came back. He started taking more of his vitamin C, his cure-all. He was so cute, too. He had a very heavy accent. He would call it vitamin C. (laughs) And (laughs) his arthritis was gone in his spine. And the doctor was like, we don't know why this happened. And he was like, I do. And they didn't listen to him. They're like, Mm -hmm. okay, crazy man. Mm -hmm. But he... um, Didn't he have no wrinkles? Oh, my God. That's right. That's just a side thing. (laughs) He had the most beautiful skin. He had no wrinkles. And as we know, vitamin C is very important for skin, for Mm. collagen building, for Mm. clearing up free radicals, which affect, which ravage your skin, Mm. which cause wrinkles. So he had no, he had no, he lived to 99. He had no wrinkles. That's incredible. John will be dozing up on those vitamin Cs, right? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, John, you have no wrinkles as it is. What are you talking about? (laughs) No, we're going to keep that skin until the 99. What's amazing is find a lot of creams and lotions especially facial stuff that has vitamin c in it it that's great but you actually mm-hmm. also need to take it internally mm-hmm. um because it really does help yeah i've been doing vitamin c i have a little brown spot and it's gotten lighter and lighter over six wow. months vitamin c i've been rubbing on it and my dog is currently being treated with intravenous vitamin c she's 12 years old wow. she's got a couple little tumors and they're shrinking and it's because of the vitamin c and in wow. other countries they do this normally like it's mm-hmm. just like going yeah, mm-hmm. just like going to your doctor and getting chemotherapy, they're doing vitamin C to shrink That's uh, tumors and destroy yeah. cancer cells. Yeah. What other vitamins are, are that potent, if, if you know? Vitamin C, vitamin C is, okay, so it depends on what we're talking about, but, yeah. but uh, vitamin C is an uh, antioxidant. Mm-hmm. So when we, as we just live through life, things oxidize, which means, okay, so if you ever see metal that rusts, that means that that oxidize. There's a, a transaction that happens where the oxygen in the air and there's with the metal and there's a reaction and it, and it forms the rust. Same kind of thing happens in our body where things break down. We mm-hmm. oxidize. Mm-hmm. The way that we clean that up, the way that our body does self-care is if you have the right nutrients, it will clean itself up. Um, mm-hmm. For instance, like if you have cells, sometimes they break apart. So mm-hmm. internally or whatnot, and that will cause free radicals. It will call these, cause these little um, particles that used to be in the cell, that should be in the cell. Mm-hmm. Your body is like, what, what is this? This, is, this needs to be packaged in the cell. Okay, mm-hmm. we need to get rid of this. Mm-hmm. The way that those are moved out of the body is that the vitamin C works to, to uh, mop up, my mother used to say this, mop up <laughs> free radicals. So um, the way that, that if we have a lot of free radicals, those are caused by sugar, caffeine, smoking, Alcohol, red meat, acidic negative food. thinking, acidic food. Mm-hmm. Um, I must be loaded with. Them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You need your vitamin C. <laughs> so it's a yeah. super potent. Uh, it's it's used on a lot of body processes. Okay. If you're gonna take one thing, if you refuse to take a multivitamin, a multimineral, a vitamin E, a vitamin B, and a vitamin C, those are my top five for me personally. Okay. If I if I'm not going to take my full regimen. Sure. If you're going to take just one thing, take vitamin C. Yeah. It helps your immune system. It helps your hair, skin, and nails. It helps your brain function. It helps your nerve. It helps a lot of things. Is it best to juice it, or is it better to take a capsule? You know, 
that I I have people within my own family that are like, I'm not taking capsule. I'm just doing it through Whole Foods. Yeah. It, our, our food, you know, if you're going to, if you have an orange tree in your backyard or mm-hmm. a grapefruit tree or a lemon tree and you're just going to bite into that fruit or juice it sure. fresh mm-hmm. yeah. all the time, go for it. Okay. If you live a modern life or you travel, yeah. you're going to need to supplement it. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's coming from actual food. You yeah. never want to take um, synthetic, synthetic mm-hmm. vitamins ever, 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 yeah. ever. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I take it in a powder form and I put it in smoothie with an orange. So I just figure between the two of them, they're doing <laughs> something good. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I always Perfect. do smoothies too. So mm-hmm. that's why I was asking yeah. about that. Yeah. And I want to see, we're getting close. Yeah. Do you have one last advice for our viewers if they want to look into eating healthier or even looking into more a more plant-based food or getting supplements into their system besides, you know, of course, go online. Let's get on iTunes, listen to your podcast, but work. What is the best way to get those resources? I love YouTube. Um, I love, there's a few channels that I think are really good um, that people can watch. Um, And then, you know, just know who you're following. Follow the Mm -hmm. people that are doing this work that are posting on Instagram, like here's how to make this great smoothie with all the greens and things like that. Um, I'm happy I can list them off. I mean... Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I follow, <laughs> let's see. I don't know anyone's handles. Hold on, Susie, you go. Well, maybe we <laughs> can just post it on the... Yeah, yeah um, I'll give you some resources yeah. to post in the yeah. show notes. Okay, sure. perfect. Um, you know, I would definitely say, like, be suspicious. Mm-hmm. Not that... It's, it's hard because, like I said, so many people have so many different opinions, mm-hmm. and you have to find what works for you. Mm-hmm. But um, find out who you're getting your information from. You know, if you find a couple of different sources that seem honest... If people are peddling products all the time and that's all they're doing or they're sponsored all the time, yeah. probably you want to find a couple of different resources. And if you find a few different people saying the same thing, try it out. See if it works mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. You know, and also tap into your own body. Like yes. I hadn't for there was one period of time where I didn't have like a, fr- a carrot juice for quite a while. And then I had one and I felt like energized. And I'm like, oh, oh my God, yeah. I feel great. And I'm like, note to self, hey, your body likes carrot juice. Have some, yeah. you know. Yes. So try different things. Be gentle with yourself, mm-hmm. um, especially if you've never heard of this before and you've never taken a supplement or you're, you know, never really researched any of this. It, it, it does take time and, and it's an education. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, and I'm going to get a little conspiracy theory, our government is not looking out for our nutrition. Mm-hmm. They have... Um, this big agra. This big agra, yeah, and they have big. They have they. They're they're not so worried about it. The yeah. closest we came was Michelle Obama pushing plants mm. and fruits on our children, yeah. mm-hmm. which is the nicest An thing exercise. she could have done. Yes. <laughs> and exercise, yeah. and mm-hmm. so. And right, just to top off that, um, watch Fed Up to see what happened mm-hmm. with, and you guys know what I'm talking about, with the Michelle Obama thing and, and why it kind of, did you notice the exercise thing went up and the nutrition part went away? Well, they mm-hmm. explain it in Fed Up what happened. And then um, a couple more documentaries are obviously What the Health, which just came out, mm-hmm. Plant Pure Nation, anything by uh, the Cowspiracy guys. Um, there's so many good ones. Go to Amazon, look for the health documentaries, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, mm-hmm. anything by Joe Cross, they will change your life. Mm. Amazing. Thank you so much yeah. for being here. And where can we find you? We're at foodhealsnation.com, foodhealspodcast.com. Follow us on social at foodhealsnation. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, everybody, check in every Tuesday and Saturday. There's a new episode coming out for Food Heals. We only do Tuesdays now. That oh, was for only the do launch. Tuesdays? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, Tuesdays, Tuesdays, check in. But there's a hundred and f- nearly 150 episodes to catch up. So, there's a lot of incredible information that you have compiled over the last couple of years. Thank you for all the amazing work you're doing in the world, empowering people to step into their health, step into a healthy lifestyle. So, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having us. Thank you Thank so you. much. And listen to our is- episode with Christy Reeves, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you guys. And everybody out there, Thank you again for joining us today. We will see you next Wednesday at 3 o'clock with dancer choreographer Leslie Scott as our guest. And remember to rebel on. Woo!